Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Poe, and today I'm doing week 13 of my 2022 reads. This week I read a bunch of really great, really diverse stuff, so let me tell you all about it. Timestamps and content warnings are in the description box below. First, I finished Maisie Chen's Last Chance by Lisa Yi. This is a contemporary middle grade that I thought was absolutely wonderful. It's about Maisie Chen, who is 11 years old and lives in LA with her mom, but for the summer, uh, they go to Last Chance, which is a very, very small little town in the Midwest where her grandparents live and run a Chinese restaurant. Her mom is kind of not really in contact with the parents anymore, and Maisie doesn't really know her grandparents but her grandfather has gotten very ill and so they're going there to help take care of him as well as to help her grandmother run the Chinese restaurant and so while they're there Maisie starts learning all of this history of her family and we get interspersed with Maisie's own story um, flashbacks to the history of her family and so her grandfather is telling her the story of their ancestors of the ancestors that they had who moved over to the US from China in the 1800s, worked on the railroad companies, and also helped out with a lot of other Chinese immigrants, especially Paper Sons, which is such a great historical aspect. I love that this was included. So this book, while contemporary, also has really big historical aspects just talking about the Chinese American community. I thought it was done really, really well. And in the contemporary modern day storyline for Maisie, it's talking about a lot of issues that I thought were wonderful. So talking about really her mom's relationship with her own parents and how they haven't really communicated very well. Talking about a lot of the racism in small town USA. Um, this was especially, you know, relevant, I think, because this was being written during a lot of the uh, hate crimes against Asian Americans. And it was just really, really well done. All of these discussions, I thought it was just so good. And it had great writing, really great characters, and it was a fun read while also having a lot of of heavier topics. So perfect middle grade, highly recommend this. Gave it five out of five stars. Next, I read The Book of Delights by Ross Gay. This is a book that I heard about from Rachel at Kalanadi, who I'll link below, and it is basically a collection of essayettes. So really, really small one-page essays where Ross Gay sort of decided to conduct a project of writing about daily delights. So kind of like a journal. So these are very stream of consciousness types of little essays. Um, reflecting on something in his day that he found delightful. And his writing is absolutely beautiful. He's a poet. You can feel that. Um, at times it is a little bit dense. So I found that uh, originally I'd thought, oh, this is something I could read, you know, right before bed. But actually it demanded a little bit more attention than that just because of the complexity of the sentence structure almost. But it was really, really beautiful writing. Also, the delights that he reflects on are wonderful just introspective things about himself, uh, reflections about the world at large, a lot of nature writing, a lot of loving the beauty of the world around him, but also some of these are a little bit heavier, tackles some themes of, of racism, things like that, uh, but really just such a great collection. So I gave it four and a half out of five stars. Then I read The Siren of Sussex by Mimi Matthews. This is a historical romance novel that I heard about from Cousin at Always Doing, who I'll link below. It is set in the Victorian period, and the heroine is a woman who's an excellent horsewoman, but she really needs to go into society and find a husband to kind of set up her family so that her younger sisters will have opportunities when they come of age. Um, and she decides that since she's not really the belle of the ball in any manner, that she should n kind of utilize her skill as a horsewoman to show off and get people's attention. And she decides to go to um, a kind of a tailor who also does dresses and writing habits to get something really stunning made. And the tailor that she goes to happens to be uh, Indian British. And they end up, you know, obviously, because it's a romance novel, falling in love. But there's a lot of complexity to this because they're of different social status and also because he is 
part British and part Indian. And so there's a lot of issues of race and colonialism that are brought up in this. Um, so yeah, this book is filled with a lot about dressmaking and a lot about kind of colonialism. So it's got some really interesting layers to it that I thought were really, really curious. Um, and it's very interesting too, because Mimi Matthews is um, part Indian and part white. And so it's just neat that she was able to kind of see herself in her own writing, if you, if you know what I mean. And she had great notes at the end about a lot of the historical aspects that were included in this. I really liked how she brought so many of those in and how she wove together some of the historical events with what was happening in her storyline. There were times where this story got a little silly though. Um, just things like, for example, um, the, the hero puts pockets in a lot of the dresses for the heroine and the heroine's like, oh my god, dress with pockets. And it just felt a little silly. It's, it's, it felt like fan service, but it was cute. Um, and there were also just a couple of times where my immersion was broken because they went and did something that I was like, I don't think you should do that. That doesn't seem realistic. Um, but even so, this was a fun book and I gave it four out of five stars. Then I read The Gospel of Breaking by Jillian Christmas. This is a poetry collection that I thought was really great. Uh, definitely some of these poems went over my head, but I really liked what I got out of them. Um, there's a lot in here about identity, especially queer identity and identity as a Caribbean Canadian. And just so much in this was powerful, full of emotion, full of uh, introspection and also full of anger. There's like this one poem all about how angry she is at somebody who stole her bike. And I just, I thought that was excellent. Um, and a lot in this about love, so much in this about love, a lot in this about family, especially her, her grandmother, um, and just a lot about womanhood and about queerness. It's just a great collection. Um, and I, I really found it worthwhile. I gave it four and a half out of five stars. Then I read some graphic memoirs, which were great, starting with Wake, The Hidden History of Women-Led Slave Revolts by Rebecca Hall, illustrated by Hugo Martinez. So this is a book that I've heard so many different booktubers talk about that I really respect, and I got it from my library, and it was just as good as everybody was saying. So this is sort of half memoir, half history, or half almost reconstructed history. So Rebecca Hall is a historian, and this is her experience trying to research for her PhD women-led slave revolts um, and basically not finding hardly any information because a lot of historians a lot of the people recording history really um, didn't feel that this was important so even though they happened it wasn't it's not there in the record. And so it's her journey trying to find out more information about people who society basically had decided were irrelevant. Um, and so there's no records. And uh, it also really brings a lot of that into the present as well and her own experiences and the own way that she is dismissed and, and the way that it is all integrated. I thought that the artwork for this was actually really, really stunning. It's, it's a very harsh art style. It's almost like wood blocks um, and it's very, very kind of strong and really really shows I think so much of the emotions and what was going on but what I thought was amazing about it was the way that it would juxtapose the past in the present and I thought that that imagery was exceedingly well done so yeah I thought this was just an absolutely fantastic graphic nonfiction. I gave it five out of five stars and I would highly recommend it and lastly, I read books two and three in the March series by John Lewis and Andrew Aiden, illustrated by Nate Powell. This is another great nonfiction memoir uh, series. It is just so wonderful. So John Lewis um, is somebody who was really, really heavily involved in the nonviolent protests during the uh, civil rights movement and was the leader of the SNCC. And he just has such a history. So I'd read the first book um, a month or two ago and thought it was excellent. And I continued on with the second and third and they are just as good. Although, whew, they are heavy because what was happening was, was intense. So, I mean, this is talking about all of these experiences of these nonviolent protests and marches that were really responded to with so much violence by the state and by mobs. And so there's a ton of 
really racist mob violence and police brutality. It is just intense. And I think that the illustrator of this actually was pretty restrained in terms of uh, the way that he depicted this, but there was just so much violence in reality that it, it's very violent books. Um, but yeah, I thought that they were really moving really excellent first-hand accounts of of that experience in the civil rights and i highly recommend these i think they're great in terms of history but also just in terms of of memoir and understanding a lot of the um kind of internal struggles that many of the activists of that era had in terms of what was the right way to go forward and the negotiations they had to uh, have with people in power and all of these sorts of things it's really really great so i gave both of these five out of five stars and i would definitely recommend them. Okay, so that is everything that I read this week. Really great books. Definitely would recommend any of them if they sound interesting to you. If you guys have read any of these, if you have any thoughts about them, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below.